I would not have you to be ignorant, brethren, concerning those which are asleep. And of course, asleep is just a word for they've died, right? It's okay. just another way of saying that. That ye sorrow not, even as others which have no hope. So can you sit that back? So, so what might be causing happening in Thessalonica that would cause Paul to say that, right? Yeah. People have died and they're, they're worried about that. Mm -hmm. But Paul is saying, you don't have to respond in the same way as those who have no hope. No hope in a resurrection, no hope in a second coming, things like that. You can answer it differently. Verse 14, for we believe that Jesus died and rose again. Even so, them also which sleep in Jesus will God bring with him, with that second coming, right? These are people who died firm in the faith. It might be early in their church experience, but they've died in the, in the faith. Verse 15, For this we say unto you by the word of the Lord, that we which are alive and remain until the coming of the Lord shall not prevent them which are asleep. Now, this verse is one of those places where the King James just makes it a little bit difficult, <laughs> right? And, and, and that's because the word prevent for us means stop, stop it coming, yeah. right? But in King James English, it means to proceed, um, right? Okay. So that which are alive when Jesus comes shall not precede them which are asleep. So it's this idea that when Jesus comes with his second coming, the people who have died in their congregation will be raised up mm -hmm. to meet him. Um, and this is what we talk about in terms of the first resurrection. They'll be part of the first resurrection. And so Paul is saying to the people, don't worry about what's going to happen to them. Mm -hmm. What's more important about what's going to happen to you? Mm -hmm. Are you going to live a life that you will be prepared to participate in the first resurrection like them? I think that's really powerful. Mm -hmm.